buddies over here this evening and he decided to ask me this question what's the inside of a 2879 look like so that led us down a long discussion of what the collector what the emitter what the base is what all the different properties are and what they do so i decided i'd physically show him so what we did with a simple torch and a pair of pliers is we heated up all the different kinds of transistors that are out there on the market this first one here is a 2290 next to its partner the MRF 453 if you look real close you'll see that them things are about the same damn device of course this one has a slightly higher gain so there's a few more transistors mounted up on the device and once again we see the same result with a 455 which is the same thing as a 1446 and a 450A same device different footprint and slightly different tabs one's a stud and the other one's a TO case mount so then that led us into the discussion of what's the difference between a 2879 and a DEI 2879 so we started to talk about it on the right we obviously have a 2879 on the left we have the DEI 2879 as you can see there's a night and day difference now all these transistors were dead before we started so there's been no waste of material here it's so just simply for research and we're having fun but the design of this transistor strongly leads me to believe that this is a higher frequency transistor it's not a true 0 through 30 megahertz transistor like this one this would be something that would start at about 20 megahertz and maybe go out to 60 or 80 megahertz but it's been relabeled and sold as the replacement for this you call it the duck it walks like a duck it looks like a duck but it's not a duck it's something completely different and then over here we have the inside of my 50 volt transistors which are the biggest bipolar transistor that money can buy and I blew a couple of these up I had to dig around to find these blew these up in testing to find out what the absolute theoretical max voltage and by the way that was 78.5 volts otherwise 18 volts above their absolute cutoff or their design limitation now just so we have a double blind test and people don't say I was making this up go down here and we're gonna heat the glue up on this transistor until it breaks down as we all can see that's a DEI 2879 there I think we got the scooch hot enough now that's your smoking simply lift the top off same device I wonder what happens when we get our new transistors in here in a couple days and we pop the top off them to see what they look like on the inside. Should we shoot a video of that? I don't think we should. It'll start a war. Anyhow, my name is BBI, and without a shadow of a doubt, I'm the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Hey, come check us out, www.bbiamps.com, and I just shot this for fun. I thought you'd all be interested. I'll see you. Bye. Lex 46 pill a guy sent up to me. We start looking at these transistors. Now we're going to talk about all the other stuff. That, we'll come back to that here in a minute. But I think what we got here, boys and girls, is some Chinese knockoffs. No joke. Here's the two that I pulled out. And the red is just not quite normal. But the main thing let's look at the tab length I don't know what these are but we're gonna find out if those haven't been cut that's the way they came those little tabs that's a bag of real ones from a distributor that we believe in All right. look at these OB 
or zero B. Man, even the prints bunk. All right, give me a second. Okay, now, I don't want anybody to get too overly excited because there's no way I'm trying to Im imply that X-Force did this. This is such bastardized work in here that I've got a guy that finally sent me his box to get repaired because he's so frustrated with the other technicians he's been dealing with. And I think somebody tried to pull a fast one on him. So we're going to go ahead and pull these other transistors out and then we're going to test them as we go. Should be pretty easy since the transistors weren't soldered down that well to begin with. And the tabs are only a sixteenth of an inch long. He's hanging out, so if you hear him shuffling around in the background and squeaking around in chairs and stuff, that's him moving. Sorry about that. This is interesting to me. I've seen these before, but the print wasn't actually even square on the transistor top. But the Toshiba, if you look at the Toshiba logo, the top of the transistor, the print's not even right for it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second, but my bag of transistors just got taken away from me that I was using as a display. It's okay, I'll pull a loose one, loose one out of the box. So here, we're going to use this one here as a reference. last two out of here. So here's the six, and that's the actual real one. As you can see, look at the print on them. The print's completely different. All right, we're gonna reset, and we're gonna start tearing these apart. We're gonna figure out what the hell makes these tick. I'll be back. Okay. do ourselves a little baseline test. Grab a hold of that. Grab a hold of that. Grab a hold of that. We'll go up here to our computer. And we say test. Now, this is a neat little program because it allows me to plot everything. 
and it gives me all the baselines for all the components. So the baseline, look at that, five total mils worth of current. That, that, okay, so this is our brand new Toshiba. That's the actual real deal Toshiba there. Workbench is so, so bright it overexposes the transistors. But here's our baseline for our reference. I've already gone through and tested all of these knockoffs. What we got ourselves here is the Chinese transistors. That somebody has printed Toshiba on the top. So we know that this one's bad. These are good. As far as the tester's concerned, as far as my opinion, no. Let's see what the old tester tells us here. Okay, so it's got a total overall gain of two. Eesh. That number there is getting concerned. These actually test out a lot like these. Go figure. Alright. <clears throat> I'll show you what I mean. Starting to understand why the guy said he thinks he got ripped off. <laughs> Did not only get ripped off, you got ripped off with no loop. This poor guy got bent over. Let's look at that. Same. These are DEIs. Well, you know what I'm going to do next. You all know what I'm going to do next. Let's rip the top off one and see what it looks like on the inside. <laughs> Let's see what we got. So we got 2879 that's bad. We ripped the lid off of it. And the DEI, we ripped the lid off of it. And this is what we're going to rip the lid off of now. Same transistor, these little Chinese knockoffs. Let's go ahead, pour some heat to it here. Get the epoxy that holds the cap on to break down. Please, what do we have here? Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Dude, this looks like the inside of an MR455. Honest to God. Hmm. There we go, Chinese knockoffs. Have the same pin out as a Motorola. At least for the pin cart machine that makes these. Interesting. Well, you got ripped off, brother. It's okay. We're going to put uh, real Toshiba's back in their spots. Interesting. I'll see you. Bye.